Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies and I'm excited to be talking with Caitlin in regard to the microgrid infrastructure that Schneider Electric is helping develop. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with microgrids, this technology is really the future, not just in terms of sustainability, but for resilience. Now, Caitlin is one of their leaders in terms of talking about this and why microgrids are so important for the future. So I'm gonna let it hand it over to her so she can give us some background in terms of these microgrids. Yeah, thanks. So before we jump into kind of what to do if you want to microgrid up your site, let's first talk about what is a microgrid. Yeah. Right? A microgrid's all about behind the meter on-site generation and storage. So you're talking solar, battery, generator, fuel cell, combined heat and power. It's all about taking what's traditionally just a consumer of electricity and making them a prosumer, right? Now they're producing and consuming electricity. So they basically built their own infrastructure. Right. That's it's a part of the infrastructure. Yeah. Thus it's a microgrid. But isn't their nano grids too like you can get really oh. down this little rabbit hole we could go macro micro nano mini call it what you want but why is it called a microgrid so the space that we typically play in at schneider is the commercial industrial some residential it's all about behind the meter right right you can have your off-site remote facility in alaska that's that would be kind of a nano or a standalone grid because it's not part of other states or surrounding areas it's very isolated in right that sense. yeah and that's a microgrid is isolated to some degree. So the microgrids that we typically work on are ones that are connected to the grid, but can also isolate. So think about, you know, let's think about a- An automatic transfer switch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how it used to be done. And now we're going more towards smart and motor operated breakers uh -oh. in order to do it. So, but first, why, what, what is a microgrid? So we have the utility power coming in. Right. Let's think of a traditional office building. They have utility power coming in and they have some loads, but now they put solar on their roof and a battery energy storage system so that they can use those in grid tide mode, right? Traditionally, the grid's up the majority of the time. Right. So let's make use of those assets so we can lower our cost of electricity, meet the sustainability goals. But when the utility grid goes down, whether there's a hurricane, wildfire, rolling blackout, we open the main breaker or the ATS and we disconnect from the utility. And now we're operating like our little or micro grid. Right. So that's kind of where the name come from. You can do this in all applications. Now, obviously we primarily focus in the residential sector, but Schneider goes beyond the residential sector. You're actually just starting to get into the residential sector. Like I've mentioned in some of the other videos, you have new home constructions going yep. up in California area, and we're actually doing the first microgrid in California. Sadly, California wasn't the first to do it. Florida was. I don't know how Florida ended up doing like <laughs> four or five microgrids before California, but it's probably legislation. I'm not going to get onto it. Florida Schneider, meet California. Yeah, go, it's a, yeah. a microgrid. Yeah. But the fact that we're finally getting to do them is really important. But the application isn't just for the home community. It's got to go beyond that. It has to be in an industrial application, like at Resort World here in Las Vegas, where you know you could operate an entire hotel separately from the grid if there was a grid failure. We have a water shortage going on at the hydro dam. So what happens if there's the water reaches too low and they shut off the generators? Well, there's not going to be power flowing into Las Vegas because I think it takes 70%. So what you guys are working towards is really allowing us to basically create a bunch of microgrids and ideally allow them to communicate with each other yep. too. Yeah, there's so many ways to take it, but really on-site generation, like you become a prosumer, it's about independence. You're taking control. Historically, we were just kind of mindlessly depending on the utility, right? Now we're, we're taking control of that. And it's really neat to see there's some very intentional new communities that are going up that are designing with these challenges and pain points in the future in mind so that they have these microgrid systems intentionally built in to the community so that each home can be their own independent system but also depend on their neighbors, depend on their communities. Now on an industrial or utility application, which you more cover, right? Yep. So, you know, what new construction are we seeing or can this be retrofitted to existing areas yeah and that so a lot of people when I first start talking to them they think greenfield this is a new technology let's apply it to new buildings but actually probably over 90% of the projects that I work on are existing sites oh, how do we take that's an big. exist yeah yeah that's a lot 90%. yeah yeah how do we take an existing site and expand upon that right we have a huge fleet of installed buildings homes in the US what can we do to upgrade those so there's kind of upgrades to sites that have no generation resources 
And then there's also upgrades to solar only facilities. Okay. Because solar on its own doesn't provide backup power. Right. You have to separate it. You have to have batteries. You have to have generators. You need it all to communicate. Um, and obviously you guys are leading the way there. But there's more than just sustainability going on here. But it's it's energy efficiency. And it's grid resilience. But there's also safety involved. Yep. There's cybersecurity that needs to be accounted for in terms of doing these microgrids. Because rather than trying to secure an entire infrastructure, you can shut off and cut off certain sectors if there was a breach, yep. right? Yeah, yeah, so cybersecurity is number one, right? Traditionally, safety is number one, and, and we think safety of the electrical equipment, but safety now includes the cybersecurity aspect of it, especially because a lot of this is gonna be cloud connected, right. right? When you're talking about a community microgrid, or even just a microgrid that's doing optimization that's happening in the cloud, you're gonna be cloud connected. Yeah, you're not gonna have a, a Cat5 cable or Cat6 yeah. cable running from every house underground. Yeah, exactly. Ethernet can only really take us so far. Right. So cybersecurity is, is number one, right? If these systems aren't gonna be safe, both from you know personal safety as well as cybersecurity, then we're never going to get off the ground. But microgrids are really solving about more than just safety. That's our baseline. Yeah. But then it's a multitude of issues that people are facing now, whether that's at the C-suite executive level or at a individual home level. Right. So we have, you know, at the C-suite level, we see the chief sustainability officer saying, I set a net zero 2030 target. Right. But hey, I'm also going to electrify my fleet, so your load's going to increase. By like tenfold. By a lot, yeah. yeah. And then you also have your head of operations saying, I'm a little bit worried about the grid, right? It seems like there's more climatic events that are causing us to go down, and I can't really take that. So make sure that it's resilient, right? Okay, now I have to solve for those two. And then you also have your chief financial officer that's saying the utilities rate is increasing. Um, so I want you to figure that out, but everything has to have a seven year payback period. So now, right, we're building up. We're talking about being compliant, being safe, but also we have resiliency, efficiency, cost savings, and, and this is what you guys have built. This it, is the triangle yeah. of, of what the path of the future really entails. It's yeah. sustainability, cost savings, efficiency, reliability, resilience, compliance, safety, and physical security. And it all it's all connected. It, you have to do it all or you don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at I, the end of the day. I mean, and, and, uh, this is my favorite part is the data. I'm kind of an energy nerd, so I get daily texts about my consumption of my electricity at my house, but you manage what you measure. Right. If you're not measuring it, you're not managing it. Well, right. we've gotten to a point we have to know what we're using and consuming because it's it's not infinite you yeah. know it is finite in terms of the energy so you you gotta just scale accordingly and doing these microgrids is allowing us to have a finite kind of infinity thing going on here of individual ongoing energy usage yeah that's really helping electrify the entire infrastructure I mean the infrastructure is having a very difficult time here in California I mean we're in Vegas but in California <laughs> Close enough, yeah, yeah we had these huge heat waves you may have seen some of the news and they're telling people not to charge their electric vehicles. It, it's kind of like, wait a minute, if we're going to go all electric, but you don't want me to charge my electric vehicle, there's something wrong with the infrastructure and right. it needs to be upgraded. And what you guys are doing in terms of developing microgrid technology is helping make that future a reality so we don't have instability. Yeah, I mean, it's it's making people feel more secure, more in control, more independent. Yeah, yeah. you've got a lot of first world problems to solve. <laughs> yeah. so. Hey, microgrids can be applied everywhere. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. can once you once you get them scaled right. Um, yeah. But is there anything else you'd like to add to our viewers? I really appreciate the time you spent with us. Yeah, I mean, like you said, microgrids are the future, but I, I really think they're now, right? It's not some futuristic technology that we're now testing out. Right. It, it's actually it's happening, applied right? right? Now. We have loads of install base of microgrids. It's happening. It's solving multiple pain points. It's just figuring out what combination makes the most sense based on that application. Now, if some of our viewers wanted to reach out uh, to Schneider Electric, would they be able to find and navigate their way is there some links you can provide us down in the description below possibly yeah so yeah we can learn more yeah reach out to me on LinkedIn right always happy to connect oh, perfect yeah um, but also yeah we have loads of links that we can put in here to, to, to figure learn out more. Yeah. yeah learn more talk about some case studies read some white papers to get really into into the the details of the kind of technology perfect well yeah. I appreciate your time be sure to subscribe to the channel and use some of those links down below if you're interested in learning more about microgrids going up in your area.